everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus combination. It's really good, really good guys. That bergamot, the zing, the peppermint, it's good stuff, good stuff. So I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking photo, talking video, talking tech. Today is a tech day. It is a Starlink day and Verizon day, let's call it. The question today is what's better or which one should I get, Verizon Home or SpaceX Starlink? Inside of my house, what is the best way to go? Or maybe even inside my business, what is a better way to go? Now, let me preface this entire video with, if you have fiber availability, just turn this video off right now, all right? Go get fiber and call it good because fiber as of today is still going to be better than both. 5G, LTE, satellite, LEO satellite, low earth orbiting satellites with Starlink, it doesn't make a difference. Stick with fiber, okay? But if you do not have the opportunity to have fiber, well, these are gonna be a couple of your options and probably the best options. Now, there are a bunch of companies out there that offer service, but the problem is, is the majority of them offer unlimited, which are not unlimited. And if you're going to get service inside your home, you need unlimited, true unlimited, because if not, you're not gonna be able to watch movies or do anything. A perfect example is if you had AT&T and their unlimited plan, once you hit 50 gig, guess what? You're slowed down so much that you couldn't even watch a movie, all right? It's not even possible. It's complete trash. So just forget about it. Anyways, LTE and 5G home internet plans are available from a couple of companies. T-Mobile is one of them, Starry, and I believe Verizon. We're gonna go over Verizon and compare it to SpaceX, Starlink, because that is the one that I found to be the best. Before we get any further, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go pick them up. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books, once again, jakerstina.com forward slash books. They're 100% free. Also, if you want Starlink coverage and you're here just for Starlink stuff, well, I put together a playlist just for you. It is a Starlink playlist. There's probably 50, 60 videos on there, a bunch of helpful how-tos, tricks, tips, all sorts of information. Go check that out when we're done with this video, of course. What we need to look at is data limitations. And like I was alluding to earlier, Data limitations is everything. If you are going to have this service inside your home or business, you need a true unlimited plan. And not a lot of them offer it. The majority of them say that they're unlimited, but once you get to a specific data usage for a month period, a billing period, a billing cycle, guess what? What they do is they allow you to continue to download, continue to use the internet, but at such a reduced speed, it's literally like 1980s, 2400 baud modem speed. I've told this story many times in the past. If you're new, you haven't heard it, but I've had my AT&T slowed down to such a degree because I went over that 50 gig limit that it was going so slow that the customer service representatives, the technical support people over at AT&T Mobile, they could not even pick up a signal from it. They didn't have enough data coming in to be able to do testing on the phone itself. True story. So keep that in mind. Unlimited is not always unlimited. We're gonna look at Starlink Unlimited as well as Verizon Unlimited. And are they truly unlimited? Now, for the most part, a lot of the unlimited is BS, as I was saying, but these two companies do not slow down your service when you hit a specific limit, kinda, sorta. Looking at Verizon first, Verizon does not slow down your connection when you hit a specific threshold. So it doesn't matter if you've downloaded for the month or for that billing cycle 50 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes or a terabyte, they're not gonna slow you down for it, which is very important if you're going to have home service, right? Why is that? I keep saying that, but why? Well, just so you have an idea, if you download a 4K movie, let's say, you're watching with your family, those 4K movies could be 25 gigabytes. Some of them are massive, and it really depends from movie to movie and duration. So just think about that. 
if you had a limit of let's say 50 gigabytes, you would basically be able to watch like maybe 10 movies or something throughout the duration of your entire billing cycle. Well, how about everything else besides watching movies? So you see how that would play a major role in this. Now, what Verizon does, which I don't like, is that even though they call it unlimited, it's kind of not, kind of, sort of. And the reason being, if you look into Verizon's TOS or their terms of service, where they kind of break things down into the nitty gritty, what they say is to watch 1080p, that's all you really need is a 10 megabit connection. And actually they're right. 10 megabit is enough. The problem is how about if you want to watch a 4K video? Well, if you research 4K, for example, through Netflix, Netflix says it requires or it would like to see a 25 megabit connection to be able to sustain a 4K video without any kind of pausing or any kind of spooling going on. The problem that Verizon has is that once a video begins to play on their service, it knows that it's playing and it will immediately throttle that connection to what? 10 megabits per second. So if you're watching a 1080p video, you're okay. As long as no one else is on the computer playing Fortnite and someone else is on the phone or someone else is downloading some new music or whatever, yeah, you'd be all right. But remember, 10 megabits is what they would like for you to see and they throttle you to 10 megabits. And as soon as you get off the Netflix movie, boom, your speed comes back up to normal. Now, I found this guy, he's on one of the threads and he literally documented this and I thought it was very fascinating. What he did was he started up his Netflix on his computer and he ran a fast speed test, right? And when Netflix was running, he was getting 9.5 megabits per second. His latency was 35 milliseconds and his upload speed at the time was 5.4 megabits. So you can see 9.5 was that magic number. Up to that 10, right? They're throttling. Now, what he continued doing was testing and testing. And the minute that he stopped that Netflix video, what happened? Boom. 38 megabits per second with a latency of 38 milliseconds and an upload speed of 5.5. So obviously we can see that they are 100% throttling when you're watching videos. They do not want you to watch 4K videos because if you were to go past that 10 meg mark, let's say watching a 4K video, boom, it's going to throttle you immediately. So this is an issue if you have a current or the latest and greatest TV and you do have 4K video available to you because you will not be able to use it. This service is gonna provide you with about 50 megabits down and approximately four megabits up. So he's actually doing pretty good. He's got about 38 down, but he's at 5.5 up, which is actually over the allotted or the amount that they say that they're going to give. So it's not bad. The cost is about $50 a month if you auto pay or $60 a month if you don't. Not a bad service for the price. Now, Starlink is a little bit different. Starlink is more expensive and they do not have any caps. So what that means is you're unlimited, but there's no throttling going on for anything. So at that point, you can download whatever you want and it doesn't matter how many megabits, whatever they give you, that's what you can use. Unthrottled, unlimited, no caps, which is nice. Once again, in a home or office, it is very, very important. So with their service, you are, able to watch Netflix 4K all day long on multiple TVs. Just think about it. If Netflix wants 25 megabits per second and you have with Starlink, they're rated at about 100 to about 150 to 200 megabits down and about 10 to 20 to 30, right around there, megabits up. So you're looking at anywhere from two or three 
4K streams going simultaneously with no problem. Also, when it comes to latency, a lot of the gamers out there want low latency. And I've done an entire video just on gaming through Starlink, and we've talked about this in the past. If you haven't watched any of my videos about that, once again, go check out that playlist. You'll find it in there. But a lot of us that are gamers or first person shooter gamers, you want the lowest latency possible so you don't end up dead all the time and not even know someone killed you. So what I found interesting here is with that LTE setup through Verizon Home, they're getting about 30 to 40 millisecond ping. That latency is almost identical to what we're getting here with Starlink. Starlink is anywhere from about 19 to 20 up to about 40 milliseconds. I'm currently getting about 32 on average milliseconds. So it's right in the ballpark. And instead of using a tower, it's using a satellite that's sitting in LEO or low earth orbit or 550 kilometers away. So that is quite amazing to me. And I think that I would like to see more out of the cell towers. And that brings me to something that is, I think, very important here. If Verizon has congestion going on in a specific area and they notice that at six o'clock when everyone's home, the service degrades, right? It gets slower. There's a lot of congestion. Well, they can't just simply pop up another tower. Those towers are extremely expensive. And just to get the plot of land where it goes just takes all sorts of months and months and months and months of time. So they, there's really nothing that they can do. Whereas with Starlink, what are they doing? Five, they are launching four, three, anywhere from two, once to four, sometimes twice two, a week, vacation. 50 satellites into and orbit, job, continuously, continuously. They have a game plan of getting up to three or 4,000 in orbit before the end of the year. Now, are they going to make it? Eh, probably not, but at the breakneck speed that they're going at right now, they're looking at hundreds and hundreds being put up there every single month. So this is a big, big difference to a service that's kind of bottlenecked, whereas you really cannot add new towers very easily. So I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, hey, Joe, how about 5G? You're talking about 4G or LTE, how about 5G? That's the latest and greatest, it's much faster. There's lower latency and whatnot. Yes, that is the case. But with Verizon, even with their 5G service, they still have that limitation or cap at 10 megabits. So once again, even with a 5G setup through them, you're not going to be able to download your 4K videos, which to me is just stupid, especially for a service that you're trying to sell to homeowners, people that are at home. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. The other thing is 5G is nowhere to be found. Who has 5G? I've looked at the 5G network and it is so minuscule. I mean, I can't get 5G. Matter of fact, even in town from where I am, you still can't get 5G. It's only in like big cities still. So while yes, it is an option, it's kind of not an option because the point's moot, it's not out there, right? As far as Starlink goes, the price is double, okay? So you're looking at $110 a month for Starlink in comparison to 50 or 60 with Verizon. So there is a doubling there. Also, the equipment is null pretty much when it comes to Verizon, they send you out the equipment. Whereas with Starlink, you're paying about 600 bucks for the equipment. So there is a laying out of a lot more money to get on board. But what are you getting for it? Are you getting double the speed since you're paying double the money? Yeah. You're actually getting more like three times the speed. Some places even quadruple the speed at double the money. But you're not limited by the data that you can download. So if you want to download a 4K movie, go ahead, watch it. If you want to download two of them simultaneously, sure, go ahead and do it. Whereas with Verizon, you cannot. You have that limitation. Now, once again, if you are someone that has access to FTTH, or fiber to the home. You should have stopped watching this at the beginning of the video when I told you to, because as of right now, fiber is still the way to go. 
in three, four, five years from now? I don't know. I see Starlink growing by leaps and bounds. And as we see more version 1.5s and 2.0 satellites out there, things are going to change really quickly. All right. So I'm kind of excited to see what ends up happening with it. Also remember, both of these services do undergo problems when it comes to congestion. So at certain peak hours of the day, you're going to find congestion with both services. So that really doesn't make a difference. Also, weather conditions. If you're using 5G or 4G LTE, if it's extremely bad weather, you're going to end up getting some fade. And the exact same thing holds true with Starlink. I've had a tornado rip through here and we had no access at all for about five, six minutes where it was just dead because it was just literally white out with hail balls like the size of golf balls. So there's going to be instances like this. Once again, fiber is the way you wanna go if you need 100% uptime and you don't need to worry about weather, you don't need to worry about anything else, fiber is the way you wanna go because you have lower latency. So if you are that gamer, you're gonna get more kills. <laughs> <laughs> but also you're not going to have any of that downtime and you're not going to worry as much about congestion. So guys, I hope you've gotten something out of this, help you decide which way to go. Once again, I really think Verizon is really great for 50 bucks. I think you're getting a lot, but with limitations. Starlink, I would say is my preferred choice if you're in a rural area and you need to get just amazing speed and pretty low latency. And if you have access to fiber, by all means, stick with it. That's where you need to be as of right now. If you enjoyed this video even a little bit, throw it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Share it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Let's grow this channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please do so and click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you wanna just say thank you, you can do so or become a member. Down here, you can see a button that says, thank you. Click that. Wouldn't mind it. I would appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.